Hey everyone, this is MJ. I am here with you at my channel called Reading This Life. Reading This Life is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, it's my book haul from my recent trip. Stay tuned. And as always, before we get started, remember to like this video, comment down below. Did you pick up any books this weekend? What's getting delivered to your house? Tell me, I want to know. Um, I got some books on my recent trip to Gettysburg, and I also got this cool shirt. I should have worn it in my other one, but it is Abe Lincoln, and it says, That is so four score and seven years ago. Gotta love it. Okay, so um, let's talk about. All right, the first one. So I had the pleasure of. Um, being in Gettysburg for a couple days this week, and um, one of my goals was to stop and get some uh, books at local bookstores and to check the scene out and all of that. And the one that we ran into, that thank goodness they were open, was for the historian. And for the historian is located on York Street in Gettysburg. Um, Super nice, super friendly. I met Larry. Not sure if Larry is the owner or just an employee. I, I want to say he's the owner. And um, we had a great chit chat about books. Um, they had a ton, a ton of history books. If you love history, this is the place for you. Um, the, he does sell online. He also has an eBay store. Um, so be sure to check that out. So when I was there, of course, um, I was dazzled by everything at Gettysburg and I needed to read about Gettysburg and they had Gettysburg ghost stories. They had paranormal books about Gettysburg and I opted for the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. This is The Killer Angels, the classic novel of the Civil War by Michael Shara. Um, I will read you the blurb. In the four most bloody and courageous days of our nation's history, two armies fought for two conflicting dreams. One dreamed of freedom, the other of a way of life. Far more than rifles and bullets were carried into battle. They were memories. There were promises. There was love. And far more than men fell on those Pennsylvania fields. Bright futures, untested innocence, and pristine beauty were also the casualties of war. Michael Schar's Pulitzer Prize winning masterpiece is unique, sweeping, unforgettable. The dramatic story of the battleground of, for America's destiny. I don't read history. Period. But I'm going to read this. because I had such a great experience at Gettysburg. <laughs> All right, so that is that. So thank you, Larry, um, again, for the help, the recommendation, and the cool conversation, and thank you for subscribing as well. Oh, and I just wanted to talk about this too. So as I'm walking out of the hotel, the Gettysburg Times says, LASD parent again complains about library books. Disgruntled parent, once again voicing opposition to the availability of library books she deems pervasively vulgar and educationally unsuitable. Here we go again. So, yeah, and that made the headline. Stay informed as to what is going on in your community, everyone, regarding people and books and freedom of speech. All of it. It's really important. It's really important that libraries stand their ground. Okay. Next. All right. Then I went to the Adams County Public Library, uh, the Gettysburg Library. Beautiful building, statue of Lincoln. I will insert some video footage here so you can check it out. Um, I went down to the bookstore specifically and walked around and I picked up a few books. Okay, so uh, while I was at the library, of course I went to the bookstore, that's what I wanted to do. Got some video, talked to them a little bit. Um, 
said, hey, I have a booktube channel, and um, is it okay if I film a little bit? And he said, sure. So here's the shelves from the actual bookstore, and I was browsing, 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 and the husband was tolerating me, as always. And um, I picked up three books, and I got my husband one, too. Um, so I'm not going to show that one, but I'll just tell you about it. So the book that I picked up for my husband, it's Coach K, Coach Krzyzewski. Um, he retired from Duke University. He is their head. He was their head bas uh, men's basketball coach. I have been a Duke fan since 1992. Um, Christian Leitner years. Don't hate me. Don't unsubscribe because I like Duke. I'm not even going to talk about <laughs> basketball on my channel. Um, but I am, I am a Duke fan. Uh, and my husband is a North Carolina fan, so think how that goes. Um, so it was um, Life Lessons from Coach K, basically. It's a motivational book, translates from basketball over to real life. So uh, I picked it up for my husband because I'm going to read it too. All right, then I picked up this book I picked up. I got it from a library a bunch of years ago. And I don't think I finished it because my library hold right now. And I never went back. So this is called The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. Have you heard of this book? Let me know in the comment section down below. So it takes place in England, 1976. Mrs. Creasy is missing. The neighbors blame her sudden disappearance on the heat wave, but 10 year olds Grace and Tilly aren't convinced and decide to take matters into their own hands. Spunky spirited Grace and quiet thoughtful Tilly go door to door in search of clues. The cul-de-sac starts to give up its secrets and the amateur detectives uncover more than they ever imagined. A complicated history of deception begins to emerge. Everyone on the avenue has something to hide. During that sweltering summer, the lives of all the neighbors begin to unravel. The girls come to realize that the lies told to conceal what happened one fateful day about a decade ago are the same ones Mrs. Creasy was starting to peel back just before she disappeared. Doo -doo -doo. So it sounds, it sounds a lot of fun. I think this was originally, I heard, um, oh gosh, Simon Savage. Before he had his YouTube channel, he did a podcast called The Readers with Thomas. Um, and he was raving about this book on and on and on. And that's why I picked it up. It was a dollar. <laughs> so I want to finish it. I started it. I never finished it. I want to finish it. This We're going back 10 years now. That was a long time ago. Okay, then I picked up this one because it has wolf in the title. And you know me and wolves. I got to pick it up. So this, I've never heard of this author. This is by... Karen Fossum. It says Inspector Sager is hard at work again investigating the brutal murder of a woman who lived alone in the middle of the woods. The chief suspect is a schizophrenic recently escaped from a mental institution. The only witness is a 12 year old boy overweight obsessed with archery and a resident at home at a home for delinquents. When a demented man robs a nearby bank and accidentally takes the, sus the, the suspect hostage, the three misfits are drawn into an uneasy alliance. Confronting a case where the strange strangeness of the crime is matched only by the strangeness of the criminals. Inspector Siger finds that small town prejudices warp every piece of information he tries to collect. Fossum once again provides extraordinary insight into marginalized lives and richly evokes the atmosphere she captured so brilliantly in Don't Look Back. So that must have been a first novel. I don't think this is a series. I think this is a standalone. I'm hoping it's a standalone. This was published back in 2003. 2000, uh, English translation copyright 2003. So I don't know. Oh, translated from the Norwegian. By Felicity, by Felicity David. So there's two um, before this. It's Don't Look Back and also When the Devil Holds the Candle. But I am just going to go into this in November or December. Um, dark times call for dark books. And that's usually what I like to read during the winter. Okay, then I picked up, let's talk about darkness. <laughs> darkness Visible. Super thin book. Caught My Eye, National One bestseller. It's a memoir of madness. In 1985, William 
Styron fell victim to a crippling and almost suicidal depression. The same illness that took the lives of Randall, Randall Gerald and Primo Levi, Vincent Van Gogh, and Virginia Woolf. That Styron survived his descent into madness is something of a miracle. That he manages to convey its torturous progression and his eventual recovery with such candor and precision makes darkness visible a rare feat of literature, a book that will arouse a shock of recognition even in those readers who have been spared the suffering it describes. The Chicago Sun-Times says, a chilling yet hopeful report from a mental wilderness into which one in 10 Americans disappear, enlightening and fascinating. Newsweek says, as short as a hangman's rope and nearly as arresting, an essay of great gravity and resonance. Never has Styron used so few words so effectively. The Washington Post. No, Washington Post Book World. Beautifully written, deeply moving, courageously honest, Styron has made a striking addition to the notable personal accounts of mental illness. This is autobiographical. It is his descent into depression and, oh wait, New York Times, let's do that one. Compelling, harrowing, a vivid portrait of a debilitating disorder. It offers the solace of shared experience. Um, so I am just, I don't know why, but this book called to me and I want to read it. This was um, published in 1992. Original copyright was 1990. I've never heard of it. Um, but always books like this call to me and I want to read them. So it says, William Styron is the author of Lie Down in Darkness, The Long March, Set This House on Fire, The Confessions of Nat Turner, Sophie's Choice, and This Quiet Dust. He has been awarded the Pulitzer Prize, the American Book Award, the Howells Medal, and the Edward McDowell Medal. He died in 2006. So this is going to be a short read. It's only 80 some pages long, but it's going to be really effing powerful. Okay. Then, da -da -da! from World of Books, ordered this on October 11th. Got it today, October 21st. Oh, and it's newer copy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to have to go like this. All right. This came up on whose channel? Criminali's channel, of course, because I get influenced by his books more than anyone else's. Um, this is a, a vampire story that he talked about in the 10 horror books that you have never heard of. Um, I was able to, well, this one actually caught my eye and I told him I have one on my radar. I found it at a great price. Got it on eBay. And I think I paid like six dollars for it maybe paperback this is um vivia i have to cover the i have to cover the cover a little bit we can't be showing any nakedness um vivia by tanith lee the undisputed queen of dark fantasies is christopher fowler i don't think i've ever read a dark fantasy i don't think i'm not sure okay i'll read you the blurb on the back Vivia, a paragon of youth and beauty, daughter of Lord Vadix, is alienated from his beautiful campaign of violence and fear. Her only solace lies in the secret cave in the bowels of the castle, known only to her and the arcane god whose shrine she believes it is. When plague enters the castle, bringing an orgy of death and destruction, Vivia seeks shelter in this seductive place. Drawn to, drawn to her innocence and beauty, a presence, Zulgaris, is resurrected, who claims her as his own. Wakened to the wonder of the undead, Vivia is granted the secret of eternal life, but she has been betrayed. Her immortality stretches before her like a damnation. Handsome Zulgaris, dark prince, war leader, and alchemist. Boy, that's quite a resume. Oh, that's the statement. <laughs> Handsome Zulgaris, Dark Prince, War Leader, and Alchemist. Period. Is Vivia to be his lover or his pet? Or far worse, is she but one more thing to be used in his relentless quest for sorceress power? Mount says, Lee's prose is a waking dream filled with tropical sensualities. No one writes quite like her. 
Interzone says, it's a pleasure to read a fantasist whose style is so superior than to that of the average writer. Okay. So I am interested in it. Oh, this was UK printing. This was not published in the United States. Was it published in the United States? I don't even know. Is Tanda still alive? She was born in 1947, so that would make her 75 years old, right? Yeah, 75. She has a bunch of other books. Blood Opera Sequence, Dark Dance, Personal Darkness, and Darkness One. She has Black Unicorn and Gold Unicorn. Copyright 1995, first published in Great Britain. Yeah, and this is a UK printing because it just has UK, Australian, and Canadian on the cover. Nothing that says US. So that is Vivia by Tanith Lee. Dark fantasy vampire fun book. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if Criminal is right again. All right. So this will be when I feel like it. Okay. So that's my book haul. We got a little bit of everything. Got a little nonfiction. We have a little nonfiction. Deep, 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 deep depression. We have fiction. Norwegian. Translated from the Norwegian. And we also have a dark fantasy sexy vampire book. So there we go. You can't say reading this life is not eclectic. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I have, don't forget, the cute little one, The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. All right. So that is all I have, everyone. I am going to wrap this up. I'm going to try and get my vlog video out and get it done. And I want to finish a book. I don't know if I could finish it tonight, but probably going to finish it tomorrow morning. Okay, everyone. That's it here from me. So I will see you in my next video. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. Uh, and goodbye for now.